even though the nearest stars are trillions of miles away, scientists know a lot about them. They have some cool tools to learn what's inside. Stick around to the end to find out what stars use for fuel. A spectrometer adds fuel to your test sample and creates a flame that releases atoms of the sample. A special lamp directs these atoms through a slit to focus it and then divide the light into individual wavelengths that can be easily viewed. proton and electron of a hydrogen atom. When the electron is excited by the flame in the spectrometer, it jumps to a higher orbit. But this is not a stable location, so the electron won't be here for long. It will jump back to the original orbit. And in the process, it dumps its extra energy as a photon, light. If the flame heats up the electron a little more, it can jump to an even higher orbit. And when it drops back, it will emit light with more energy, a higher frequency. And we see this as a different color. In 1913, Niels Bohr discovered that the electron could only jump to specific energy level orbits, quanta. For hydrogen, in the visible light range, there are exactly four electron jumps possible. And the specific colors matching these jumps are red, cyan, blue, and violet, the four spectral lines of hydrogen. When we look at the other elements with many electrons, the combination of energy transition increases dramatically, which generates a lot more spectral lines. When astronomers point a spectrometer at a star and see this spectral line signature, they know it contains hydrogen. And if they see other spectral signatures, they'll figure out all the other elements that are present. Now for the bonus material. What do suns use for fuel? Hydrogen. 92% of all atoms in the universe are still hydrogen, the simplest element. Stars are initially balls of hydrogen that under their massive gravity exert enormous pressure that fuses hydrogen into helium. Once all the helium is used up, about 10 million years, the star combines these to make the heavier elements. Our sun can produce lithium, beryllium, and boron by fusing helium. But our sun is a yellow dwarf and isn't big enough to forge the rest of the elements. A blue supergiant like Rigel in the constellation of Orion can. Its gravity can fuse heavier elements in its core like neon, magnesium, and silicon. But once it reaches iron, it's the end of the process because the fusion of iron atoms requires more energy than it produces. So the star implodes when it reaches this stage. It takes collisions of super dense neutron stars to form the rest of the elements. Here's an amazing thought. Atoms in your left hand probably came from a different star than your right hand because 200 million stars have exploded to make up the atoms in your body. What happens after a giant star like this explodes? Click here to find out.